A couple of weeks ago, I did a review of the Sony WH-1000XM3, and I had a question about codecs and what it all means. So I figured I would do a video on the subject. Now, I'm an enthusiast, but not an expert, so I did a fair amount of research to add to my existing knowledge, and I've learned a lot. And that's what this channel is all about. It's discussing and learning about audio. So let's talk about codecs and Bluetooth, what they are, why there are so many different codecs, and what's the difference. Let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Noel and this is Wheezy Reviews. And if you're new to this channel, this is where I explore the world of audio. And each week I take a look at something audio related and let you know what I think of it. And as always, we are constantly learning together. If that sounds like the kind of content you're into, then do make sure you subscribe. And first up, let's take a look at what is a codec. So the word codec comes from the words coder and decoder. And so is a literal explanation of what a codec is. A codec refers to the method of encoding and decoding audio or video that has been compressed to make the file size smaller, such as MP3 or AAC, for example. There are lots of different codecs out there for encoding and decoding audio and video to various different levels of quality with varying degrees of loss. So let's talk about why we use codecs. So there are three main methods of storing audio digitally. There's, there's uncompressed, there's lossless compression, and then there's lossy compression. So there are several uncompressed formats, but the main one that most people know is WAV or .WAV. Now this stores audio data as recorded with no loss, but the downside is that the file size is quite large. Now because this file size is so large, this is not an ideal portable format, and it would take a lot of storage space to store uncompressed WAV files, and it would require a large amount of bandwidth to stream. Now this is why we need to compress the audio to make the file size smaller. And the first of the compressed methods that I'm going to look at is compressed lossless. So there are methods of storing audio in a compressed lossless format, such as FLAC and ALAC. Now this lossless compression allows the file size to be reduced, but not to lose any data in the compression process. Formats such as FLAC are well known amongst audiophiles, but haven't reached as widespread adoption as many of the lossy compression methods. The reason for this is simple. Whilst lossless compression uses much less storage space than uncompressed, the file sizes still remain quite high. It is only in more recent years that FLAC has caught on as a viable storage option since the advent of larger and cheaper hard drives. And also, due to the reasonably large file sizes, it has been unfeasible to stream in lossless due to the high amount of bandwidth required. Now, this is also starting to change due to the increase in availability of high bandwidth internet connections and we are starting to see lossless streaming audio being made available. Now, most people are more familiar with the third method of storing audio. That is in a lossy compressed format such as MP3 and AAC. Now, lossy formats such as MP3 use psychoacoustic models to determine what parts of the audio can be removed whilst maintaining high fidelity. Now, typically this would involve removing parts of the audio that would, in theory, be inaudible. Now, the top quality versions of MP3, which has a bitrate of 320 kilobits per second, and AAC, which has a bitrate of 256 kilobits per second, are almost indistinguishable from uncompressed, lossless formats. Now, of course, we could debate the audible differences between a 320 kilobits per second MP3 and a lossless FLAC, and many people have really strong opinions on this, but for the vast majority of people, the difference is completely inaudible especially for portable listening from mobile phones using cheap earphones. So that brings us on to Bluetooth audio and codecs. So Bluetooth has a limited amount of bandwidth available to transmit audio. Bluetooth connection is also variable depending on environmental factors, interference, distance from the transmitting device and the receiving device. Therefore, the audio really needs to be compressed to be sent via Bluetooth. In a moment, we'll go into some of the codecs available for Bluetooth audio, but first, we need to talk about latency. Now, latency is the measurement of time between when a packet of data is sent and that packet of data is received. In terms of Bluetooth, this is a measurement in milliseconds of the time from when an audio packet is sent via Bluetooth and then received and played by the receiver. This latency time varies a lot depending on several different factors, that includes the processing power of the devices, the implementation of Bluetooth and codec standards, 
the signal strength, as well as the capability of the codec itself. Now, latency is not an absolute number that will always be the same, and we cannot account for environmental factors, but we can make generalized statements about the capability of individual codecs. However, just because a certain codec is capable of lower latency than another, that does not mean it will perform better in the real world. So keep that in mind when we talk about latency for each individual codec. I considered not including latency figures because they can be so variable. However, I'm going to include some generalized ballpark figures that I could find during my research. So with that said, let's take a look at Bluetooth codecs. So first up, SBC, or subband coding, is your basic Bluetooth codec. It is ubiquitous, works on all devices, and takes a small amount of processing power. However, the weakness is that this is a lossy codec with a variable bitrate. Now, whilst it is theoretically capable of a maximum rate of 328 kilobits per second, a 16-bit depth, and 48 kilohertz sample rate, which actually does sound pretty good in theory, the variable nature of SBC means that this is often not achieved. Now, whilst SBC does perform pretty well on its highest quality settings, its variable nature and uneven application of standards between device manufacturers means that SBC is a rather hit or miss experience. So whilst SBC is available on all Bluetooth devices, it should really only be used when there are no other options. Now, a quick note on latency for SBC, you can expect this to be up to 250 milliseconds, but that's going to be quite variable depending on your device and also the connection strength. Now, the next codec we're going to be looking at is AAC, and those with Apple devices that use iTunes are likely to be quite familiar with the AAC codec, which is essentially an improvement on MP3, and it's Apple's codec of choice. Now, if you remember from earlier, AAC, or Advanced Audio Coding, is a lossy codec that is similar to MP3. Now, just like MP3, AAC uses a psychoacoustic modeling to reduce the file size of the audio whilst maintaining the fidelity. However, AAC is more efficient than MP3 and results in lower bit rates and file sizes for the same perceived audio quality than MP3. Now, AAC is actually one of the more difficult codecs to find information about, and there is quite a lot of misinformation out there. However, from what info I could find, over Bluetooth, AAC supports bit rates of up to 320 kilobits per second, although typically it's going to be no more than 256. It supports a 16-bit depth, although it seems to be capable of 24-bit as well, and up to 96 kilohertz sample rates. Latency can be expected to be up to 150 milliseconds, but could be much higher and more variable on Android devices, and more on that later. One big misconception is that AAC content is able to be passed through via Bluetooth untouched. Now, that is not the case, and AAC will still have to be decoded from the source format, even if that source is AAC, for Bluetooth. Now, part of the reason for this is to encode notifications and other things into the audio. Now, Apple has the best implementation of AAC, and whilst AAC is the preferred Bluetooth audio codec for iOS devices, it should be noted that whilst many Android devices do support AAC, it often doesn't perform very well. Many Android devices vary quite a lot in terms of how well they process AAC audio, depending on the manufacturer's specific implementation. It is for this reason that AAC should probably only be used on Android devices when there are no other options. In fact, it could be argued that SBC is preferable to AAC on Android devices due to this performance disparity although your mileage may vary. But it is for this reason that Android users should continue to watch for more suitable options. Next up, we have Aptex, which is Qualcomm's Bluetooth audio codec, which unlike AAC and MP3, does not use psychoacoustic modeling. Now, Aptex operates on a fixed data rate of 352 kilobits per second at 44.1 kilohertz sample rates and 384 kilobits per second at 48 kilohertz sample rates with a 16-bit depth. It is for this reason that this is the preferred codec over SBC, as it's always going to be playing using its maximum quality. This is the preferred audio codec for Android devices, but unfortunately, Aptex is not available on iOS devices. And in terms of latency, you can expect latency to be up to 150 milliseconds. Again, the disclaimer about variability. Next up, we have Aptex HD, which is basically an extension on Aptex. This is the top quality version of Aptex, which is, again, not available on iOS. 
Now, Aptex HD uses a fixed data rate of 576 kilobits per second, a 24-bit depth and a 48 kilohertz sample rate for superior audio quality. Latency is usually a little bit higher than vanilla Aptex and perhaps being similar to SVC depending on your device. I also want to mention Aptex LL or Aptex Low Latency, which as the name suggests, offers a lower latency experience than other codecs, often less than 40 milliseconds, but at the expense of some audio fidelity. Now, Aptex LL is not widely adopted, so I won't go into too much detail here, but it is worth looking out for if you do a lot of gaming or movie watching using Bluetooth. Next up, we have Aptex Adaptive, which is the newest next-gen version of Aptex, which aims to provide a more stable and scalable low-latency codec with no compromise to fidelity. Now, Aptex Adaptive supports an adaptive bitrate, which scales dynamically between 279 kilobits per second and 420 kilobits per second, as well as both 16 and 24-bit depths and 44.1 and 48 kilohertz sample rates. Now, Qualcomm claim that the audio fidelity of Aptex Adaptive is equivalent to Aptex at 352 kilobits per second and Aptex HD at 576 kilobits per second, but using lower bit rates. Now, whether these claims are true or not, at the very least, Aptex Adaptive looks to be the ultimate codec to replace SBC, Aptex, and Aptex LL at the very least, if not also Aptex HD. In terms of latency, you're looking at around 80 milliseconds for this, although how variable this is, I don't know. This is still a very new codec standard, and it's not supported on that many devices as of yet. Next up, we have LDAC, which is Sony's proprietary Bluetooth audio codec with high-res audio wireless certification. Now, since Android 8.0 Oreo, this has been included in the Android Open Source project and should now be included in most new Android phones. Now, this could be considered the ultimate Bluetooth audio codec for Android users, as it in theory offers a far superior performance than other options. Offering audio up to 990 kilobits per second at a 24-bit depth and a 96 kilohertz sample rate, this is a significant upgrade on the competition and the best sounding audio we've looked at so far. However, there are a few caveats. LDAC has three different connection profiles of 330, 660 and 990 kilobits per second, which varies depending on connection strength. Only the top two profiles are better than Aptex and Aptex HD, and your device may not always be using these profiles. By default, your device is probably using a best efforts adaptive LDAC mode, which automatically switches between these three profiles. Now, if your device defaults to the 330 kilobits per second option, you would have been better off choosing Aptex. Now, it's often difficult to tell which codec or profile is being used by your device at any one time. However, by enabling developer options in your phone, you should be able to switch modes and force a specific codec or profile. It should be noted, however, that the higher quality codecs are less stable than lower quality codecs and are more vulnerable to range and interference issues. Now, that does go for all codecs, not just LDAC. But you should keep in mind that if you force a high quality codec, you may introduce more instability in the Bluetooth connection. Now, a quick note on latency for LDAC, you can expect this to be up to 220 milliseconds, again, with a usual disclaimer about variability. Next up, we're going to look at HWA, which is a new kid on the block. HWA or LHDC, or Low Latency High Definition Audio Codec, is a newer codec developed by the Hi-Res Wireless Audio Union and Savitech. Similar to LDAC, HWA provides a high-res audio solution with a variable bit rate of 400, 560, and 900 kilobits per second, a bit depth of up to 24 bit, and a sample rate of up to 96 kilohertz. HWA also boasts of a decreased latency versus the competition, although I couldn't find the numbers for that. Now, just like LDAC, HWA has several profiles available depending on the connection strength, However, unlike LDAC, it currently has no widespread adoption, and we don't know how quick that adoption will be if it takes off at all. It's certainly one to keep an eye on. However, at the time of writing, there is only one phone brand, and that's Huawei, supporting this standard. And the only receiving devices I've seen are the FIO BTR3 and BTR5. To my knowledge, there are currently no headphones supporting this standard. Other codecs to note are the newly announced Bluetooth LC3, and Bluetooth LE audio standards, of which not much is known as of yet, 
and Samsung also have their own codec for their phones and Galaxy Buds. The Samsung Scalable codec is only supported on Samsung devices and headphones, and it should be noted that if you buy the Galaxy Buds and you do not have a Samsung device, you'll be forced to either use SBC or AAC codecs. Now that might not be a problem if you have an Apple device, but as we discussed before, Android doesn't work especially well with AAC. So which codec should you look out for when purchasing any new devices? Well, if you have an iOS device, your options are limited somewhat. Make sure that the headphones or Bluetooth audio player that you buy has an AAC support and you're good to go. You can forget about all the other codec options other than SBC as they're not relevant. But if you have an Android device, there are many, many more options. I would say that as a minimum, make sure that your device supports at least aptX. Those that listen to more higher fidelity audio sources than aptX HD or LDAC would be the way to go. With that said, if you're just listening to streaming services such as iTunes and Spotify, then whether you're on Apple or Android, AAC and aptX are probably plenty enough for your needs. Having said all of that, the differences between all of these codecs is minimal. Whether you can actually hear the difference between any of these codecs is debatable. Now, the ultimate audio fidelity is absolutely more dependent on the standards implementation and DAC and AMP in your portable device and the driver and tuning in your Bluetooth headphones. Now, as already touched on, many manufacturers differ, sometimes greatly in their implementation of these standards. And they can also apply their own DSP settings that vary based on the codec being used and that further muddies the waters. Now, it's certainly possible that the differences between these codecs could become much more noticeable on higher-end devices. However, for the most part, ultimately, it is the playing device and the receiving device that has a far bigger impact on the sound than the codecs themselves. Right, that's going to be it then. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then don't forget to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing by hitting that red button down there. And if you're looking to support the channel, then if you check down in the description, there will be a bunch of links on how you might be able to do that. Now, I'm going to have a lot more content like this coming out soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.